You're going to start with a small piece of fresh or freshly wedged clay. This means that your clay is nice and dense, it has no air bubbles inside, and you're going to roll it in circles to make a nice smooth sphere. You can either roll it between your two palms or on the table. To begin with a pinch pot, you push your thumb down in the center of the ball. Leave a little bit of space between your thumb and the table because you want the thickness to be even all the way around. Now I have my thumbs inside the bowl and I'm slowly spinning so that I can pinch nice evenly sized walls all around my bowl, including the bottom. I'm really feeling for an even thickness. My clay was dry, so it's starting to crack and split, but that's something I can go back and try to fix. Most of all, you just want to feel for about a pencil width wall all the way around. So you can get a drip of water on your finger and that helps you begin to smooth. The idea is not to make your bowl slimy, but to let your finger glide and press. The pressing and condensing of clay is really important here. So instead of just slathering up your bowl, you're pressing and making it smooth wherever you see a crack. This is a great opportunity to flip it over, press and hold it on the table, and do some more finger pressing so that you can have a very smooth surface when you form your insect. Inspect your bowl for tiny hairlines. That means you have to look really close and find little cracks. There's one that I caught on the edge that I press and smooth with my fingers. This is a very important of your process and it takes a while. So once you have your nice pinch pot, you can give it a little slow squeeze to make it more of an oval or a scarab shape. That might cause more cracking that you'll have to smooth out, but look at your scarab from the top and decide, does it look like a beetle? Once you like your shape, and it's nice and smooth, you can start to outline with a tool your areas of the scarab. Right now, a line up around the top where the neck would be will help designate the head area. This is a smooth, large tool, and because my bowl is not too thin, I'm able to kind of dig in a little bit and get that to be a nice big segment. Then I make a line across the entire high waist area to delineate the thorax and a line straight down the back to make the two wings of the exoskeleton. And this tool is kind of going back onto those lines and making them even more definite segments. So experiment with different kinds of tools. A tool might have a nice angle on it for smoothing out your line or smoothing down any of those little crumbs. Any bits and pieces you take off of your clay, you should collect them in one little pile for yourself. And just take your time making your scarab a really cute little guy with really smooth, obvious parts of his body. can tell on this one I really took my time to make those shapes stand out but you do have to be careful and not pop through and make a hole into the center of your pinch pot you have to keep your clay strong enough and thick enough to not fall apart so here I am on the head making two circle shapes for kind of the eye areas And then beneath those eyes, there's kind of a um, triangle nose mouth feature where the mandibles would be. You can use another tool to make these sections really stand out, a little bit thicker lines. Some of the tools kind of scrape out 
some clay, but you have to be careful not to dig too deep for fear of making a hole. But that helped me sort of carve out a face with this scoop feature. On the bottom of your scarab, you can make six slots where we can stick our six wire legs later on after it's been fired. I used a sharp edge tool for that. And inside, you can carve very clearly and large your initials. That's the first letter of your first name and the first letter of your second name. Once your scarab is all segmented out, you can decide if you want any texture or detail. I used this tool to make some wing texture lightly across the back, but you don't need to do that. Some scarabs have more of like a pore texture with light little dents, but it's nice to have some variety on your piece of art. If some areas are smooth and some are scratched, then that makes our eyes interested in our art. It looks like I'm pushing away more crumbs on my scarab and smoothing it out once and for all. So here's two versions of scarabs that I created out of clay. The light gray one is what happens after it's been drying for a few days. The dark gray one was just made, so it still has a lot of moisture. All right, have fun.